Are you trying to understand the MTHFR gene alteration, the genetics behind it, and whether or not you should take methylfolate, how much you should take, etc.? My name is Dr. Taranella, and in this video, we're going to break down the MTHFR gene and some key facts that you need to know and understand, tests you might want to do, how it's connected to detoxification, what it's not connected to, the role of inflammation when you're trying to optimize your MTHFR gene, and many other things. Also, just wanted to mention, if you're getting a lot of these videos, don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button to continue getting videos like this. And as I mentioned, in this video, we're gonna look at the MTHFR gene alteration and some important facts about it, but it's not made for any specific individual. So please read this video disclaimer before we jump into the video details. <laughs> So in this video, we're going to break down the MTHFR enzyme, some of the key components of the genetics involved, some of the lab testing to do, and various other factors like inflammation and vitamin levels. So the MTHFR enzyme sits in the middle of two very important processes, the production of DNA-based pairs like the double helix and the production and generation of something known as SAMI. Everything that this enzyme does is centered or stems around these two processes. So if you understand this, you understand basically everything you need to know about MTHFR, the generation of SAMe, and the production of DNA base pairs. Now it does get a little more complex as you zoom in and zoom out of this process and see how it connects to other things. But these two functions, you just have to remember, are the two outcomes that we're concerned about when it comes to your functioning or lack of functioning in the MTHFR gene. And so how well these two processes are moving along is going to determine whether or not you have certain symptoms and whether or not your lab metrics are looking the way they should. And when we're looking at lab metrics, we're kind of looking at some of the key things surrounding dna based pair production and SAMe production. First, though, I think we should look at how this fits into the broader context of your health. So the MTHFR enzyme has broad-reaching effects on our health through its connection to these two processes that we mentioned, methylation is SAMe and DNA or pyrimidine base pair production has to do with the dna base pairs. And because it sits at the center of these two important processes, methylation and DNA-based pair productions, a lot of health issues may imply that you might have a problem with the MTHFR enzyme. But it's important to keep it in its place, too, and not overreach in what it can do and what it might be helping you with or not helping you with. So, for instance, our bodies have thousands, thousands of different reactions occurring throughout the day, constantly, even minute to minute. And the methylation process, the enzymes involved with methylation are really just a small part of this totality of enzymes and reactions that are occurring in the body. So we need to keep that in mind as well. Not only is it just one of many different reactions, it's part of a broader signal and signaling systems in our body. All the molecules in our bodies operate independent, each one being a separate signal, but they're also connected. It's like an ecosystem, similar to how trees produce leaves and those leaves fall. They fertilize the ground. They allow for worms to get the nutrition that they need, which then allow birds a source of sustenance as well. So our bodies too are like a web of interconnections and in different directions with each molecule kind of creating a signal that then goes on to create another signal. We just have to keep in mind that when we're talking about these things, it is just a model and sometimes it's an oversimplification of a much more complex dynamic system. So when you have an alteration in the MTHFR enzyme, your body will typically, depending on how severe it is, make less methylfolate, which is needed in order to make the SAMe. So when we're asking what does MTHFR enzyme do or how can it benefit us, we're basically asking what does SAMe do? And of course, there is the dna based pair aspect of this, which we'll get to as well. But first, what does SAMe actually do for us? How does it help us? So SAMe is one of the main cofactors for a group of enzymes called methyl transferases. And these enzymes transfer a methyl group from one molecule to another, which can turn that molecule on or turn it off. It's known as activation or deactivation of molecules. And there's a bunch of these methyl transferases. There's DNA methyl transferase, there's histamine N methyl transferase, which is responsible for 
breaking down, eliminating histamine. There's phosphatidylethanolamine methyltransferase, which is needed for making phosphatidylcholine and different phospholipids. There's guanido methyltransferase, which is responsible for ultimately making creatine and methyltransferase, which is responsible for breaking down catecholamines like dopamine, epinephrine, etc. So there's a lot of these different enzymes, and that means there's a lot that it can do for you in helping your body work at its optimal capacity. And as we said, outside of SAMe, it's also important for making DNA-based pairs known as pyrimidines. And if you're not making DNA-based pairs, your cells can't divide, and eventually you'll become anemic, among other things. So these are the main areas in your body that methylfolate can directly or indirectly help you with. But what it's not really involved with, directly related to, are things like your immune function and immune system problems. It's not directly related to this. However, we will talk about some ways that it can create more problems in some people that do have immune-related problems like inflammation. It's involved with detoxification, but only one area of detoxification, mainly the methylation processes of detoxification. But there are many other aspects of detoxification as well. It's not directly involved with digestion either, and it's not directly involved with a lot of different things in our bodies. So it is important, but it's not absolute. But how important is it really? Well, these different methyltransferases do touch on a lot of aspects of our health and a lot of problems that people do tend to get. So for instance, when you're not detoxing your catecholamines well, or you're not eliminating your histamines well, well, you may have more high histamine symptoms or histamine intolerance, which of course can lead to all kinds of different problems. That doesn't mean that it's only related to MTHFR and a genetic alteration there, but it is somewhat related. If you have a moderate or major alteration in your MTHFR enzyme, you probably will feel a lot better by addressing it in a significant way. Some people do get worse when they're trying to treat it and taking methylfolate. There are ways around this though too. Unfortunately, the people that tend to get worse when they're taking methylfolate are also the people that are desperately trying to find an answer or solution. And there is probably a connection there as well. These are the people that tend to have chronic health issues, more inflammation, and immune system activation like mast cell activation, inflammation, autoimmune problems, chronic fatigue, anxiety, and even digestive issues. If this is you, that doesn't mean you shouldn't try it, but that you might want to be a little more cautious. Your system is already in a more fragile state and you need to listen a little bit more carefully than the average person that maybe doesn't have these overt problems occur. There are also other things you can try and do, which we're going to talk about here in just a second. But in my experience, in people that are having these chronic inflammatory, chronic autoimmune problems, taking methylfolate can make things worse. A lot of times people have headaches, anxiety, or even more fatigue. And sometimes they'll do fine for a few weeks and then they take a turn for the worse. So you have to be more conscientious when you're having these more chronic health issues going on. The other thing is not everyone really needs to do anything about it because there are backup or alternative pathways or redundancies built in in our bodies for making things like SAMe. So that if your alteration in your MTHFR enzyme is more minor, you may not have to do really anything. The more severe alterations are not as common and these are the people that definitely need to be more diligent with doing something and trying to support the lack of methylfolate that their bodies are producing. Which brings us to how do you know if you really need to do something or not? Well, it's a combination of things that make that determination. So this video actually went quite a bit longer than I intended and expected to. So I'm going to break it up into two videos. So in the next video, we'll talk more about the lab metrics and sorting out these three variables labs, symptoms, and your genetics to determine what you should do in different situations. I do have this book where I go into more details on some of these topics and also a course on MTHFR that includes the book. And I'll put a link in the description for both of those things. If anyone is interested, you can check those out. Hopefully that makes sense. Now, if you do have questions about anything in the video, please drop them in the comment section and I'm happy to try and answer your questions. If you want a more customized, detailed answer from me, consider joining the membership program. We'll have more time and attention to dedicate to your question. Thanks again for watching. We will see you next time.